What is going on dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts guys. Today I'm doing a little discussion video talking about spirals. So if you didn't know, our new format just kicked off after the new ban list in January 2020. Also we have Ignition Assault coming out like literally two days from when I'm making this video and I don't think it changes too much. There's a couple cards that are interesting but still I, I still think um, you know I, I I don't think it'll change too too much with like not like I don't think it'll make Spiral not great. I don't think any of the new decks will become amazing, um, but I just think there are some interesting cards. But still, um, I still think Spiral will be the deck to beat. We just saw from the first weekends of the new format, Spiral is by far and away the most dominant deck uh, so far. Maybe people just need to adjust and learn what strategies are best to combat this if it is going to be the most represented and considered the best deck in the game and that's what we're talking about today i've got uh we'll say five options uh, as far as like side deck cards really really good side deck cards for the spiral matchup because uh you should be ready if you're going to any competitive events to see this deck there <laughs> i mean like it's, it's just going to be there so um yeah um i don't want to waste too much time let's get into our first card First up, we've got Drone Lockbird. This one is a super easy one. We saw this at, at the Pro, Pro Play Games Tour uh, Orlando all weekend. Almost every feature match that um, that Spiral was in, his opponent was siding in um, Drone Lockbird every time. If they didn't already have it in the main, a lot of people were just opting to put it in the main because they knew they knew they're going to play over half their uh, over half their duels against Spiral. And if they did. Droll, they want to droll for game one anyway because it's just a complete blank for them for a turn. I mean, they can do such minimal things without being able to search multiple times. It's a combo deck. It wants to search a bunch. It wants to plus a bunch. This card stops them after the first one. It gives you a chance going second to mount your board so that they're essentially just playing going second um, instead of first, which is really, really good. So just really, really strong against the matchup. I mean, the, the matchup just searches a bunch, so it's really good. Next up is Evenly Matched. This is one where it might take a little thought to see if it specifically works because you think about their strategy and you're like, oh, but like it's it's not amazing. It's all right. So here's the thing. Like the Spirals have their God tier board and then they have like their pretty good board. If they have the God tier board, they're going to end on a Trigate Wizard, which is an Omni Negate for any spell trap or monster effect uh, or activation. So... If they get to the god board, obviously the trigate can just be used on evenly. But they actually don't end on the god board crazy, crazy consistently. They end on a good board pretty consistently, but not the god board consistently. So we saw multiple times again at Pro Play Games Tour this weekend. Uh, Spiral players not ending on the god board, but ending on still a very, very formidable board. It just so happens that they had multiple monster negates, monster pops and no uh, spell and trap negation. And so Evenly Match just clears essentially that entire board. They'll probably just keep the sleeper, but it won't have the um, equip card, and it also um, could lose the potential to summon another monster out. So it's just one weakish interruption after that. So you should be able to play through that. And after the banishing, they definitely, uh, there's a good chance they might be left with just such a weak, like, pool of resources left over being like having so many things banished they can't even go back into those things and stuff like that that they may not be able to do that much after but yeah even match are really really strong against them next up we've got one uh, this one is mainly sphere mode but we're also going to throw kaijus into this mix because there are some decks that just don't really facilitate uh, sphere mode what i mean by that is that um he does take up your normal summon even if he is summoned like a kaiju, um, he does uh, take up your normal summon. So, it's kind of tough, right? Like, I mean, a lot of decks just can't afford this. Like, Thunder Dragon would have been a really good one to be able to abuse this, but unfortunately, with Colossus gone, they can't really. Something like Tenyi comes to my mind as far as, like, rogue decks go. Um, and yeah, it's just any deck that can like still do a little something something without the normal summon because this is just going to break the board in and of itself. Like they, they pretty much have all of their disruption built into three monsters. It's going to be built into the Sleeper, going to be built into the um, Trigate, and the Appaloosa. And that's the God board. And if their board's weaker than that, it's just like Appaloosa, Sleeper, and they might have another Link on board that you can just get rid of. Like why not? 
if I can get rid of, if you can get rid of three, get rid of three. So Sermo definitely super powerful against them. I would just be worried like if you're because if you're signing this and droll, if you draw both or doubles of either, it's not that good and and maybe it's like still worth it to side. But I would just be careful not having too many side cards because because sometimes I would I would believe that even like one too many hand like one and hand trapping them like a well timed ash could keep them off of three monsters. They just might try and end just one big Appaloosa, like a three monster Appaloosa, and maybe one other monster on the field, and you wouldn't even be able to sphere mode that. So it really depends on what you're trying to do and just being smart about how many hand traps you're using on your opponent so that you can still at least use your sphere mode because it is super powerful if you can resolve it. But uh, so strong. Obviously, though, that can't be used in every deck. Really, just not every deck. A lot of decks just need their normal summons. They cannot afford to just use sphere mode as a normal summon for the turn. So we also look at kaijus, and kaijus are still pretty good, just a little bit less impactful, um, and they don't take away your normal summon. So uh, when you're looking at the guide board, at least specifically for spirals going second, what you want to hit is the Appaloosa. That's probably your best target because not only are you getting rid of Appaloosa's negates, but doing that will also take away the triple um, co-link from the Trigate Wizard, making it so that he now does not have a live negate anymore because he has to be triple co-linked for that to be live. And then all you're left with is Sleeper and a bunch of beat sticks on board. And I know that's easier said than done, but like, you know, it's better than Sleeper two to three Appaloosa negates and a Trigate Omni negate, right? So um, overall, like, it's still pretty good as a one card, like, drop on your opponent. And if you're playing, you really need to be playing these in, like, a high-impact decks that can really capitalize as soon as you drop them. At least specifically, the Kaiju's more so than the Sphere Mode because, obviously, Sphere Mode's almost clearing the entire board itself. But um, this only clears one monster and gives them a beater. This is also, like, right? Doesn't it come back to your field? Uh... Yeah, and then it comes back to you, so, like, it's fine. Um, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so just keep those in mind. Next up, we have Artifacts. So this is an option for going first. I know a lot of concerns are going to be going second against uh, Spirals because you don't want to just lose. But depending on the kind of deck you're playing, Artifacts might be exactly the move you're looking for. I'm looking for stuff that might be po uh, popular coming up, like um, Dinosaurs. If you're playing, like, a Trap deck, you might already be playing these, but... This is like a one card blank, and it allows you to have damage to push into your opponent next turn, which is really nice as well. So there's there's definitely some 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 pluses and benef and uh, and minuses here, but um, you know I think a lot of people worry side deck wise when you play when when the best deck in the game currently is a crazy combo deck like Spirals, you worry about what do I do going second? If, if he just sets up the board, my deck is not powerful enough to break through that board. But what about going second? If you don't put up enough di disruption, they can also just steamroll you and OTK you going second. That's also why they're so strong, because they can do either. Obviously, they prefer to go first, but they can still get it done going second. So if you are a deck that maybe they force, maybe you're playing, some, like I said, dinosaurs. Maybe they force you to go first, because they know, like, they, they really want to go first, but, like, maybe they know you're playing a lot of hand traps. You're playing a lot of just super hateful going second stuff and so they say you go first and we'll actually otk you well you side injure your, your sanctums and your scythe and maybe you're playing a deck that already plays trap trick or something like that and you scythe them and they're gonna pass and then you're just gonna otk them straight up you're just gonna otk them no problem um there so that's actually pretty good so i definitely don't think you should sleep on options going first against the deck either and the last thing here kind of falls into that same category summon limit um, if you don't know what this card does, it says your uh, each player can only su uh, summon, period, two times per turn uh, there. So obviously, against a lot of decks currently in the game, this is a very, very good floodgate, particularly going first, going second. If they've already established too much, it's kind of just underwhelming. They've already done the stuff that you wanted to stop them from doing anyway. So it's really mainly going first. I really don't advocate meaning this card in a lot of decks. But as a side deck option, when you know you're going first, and maybe you know the exact amount of cards you're trying to side out, this could just be an auto win. If they don't have an out for this, uh, spirals kind of just like lose. If they have to call like a blind spiral agent, a super agent, like they can just lose if they miss it, right? And then you know you just kill them. So um, this is the last card again. It goes with um, artifact, uh, scythe, and sanctum. Just you want to decide it going first because it's just so good against that and so many other decks. And that's what's so like beautiful about this is that these are also just really strong side deck options generically. Like there are still other decks 
like, I don't know, Pendulums that Droll Lockbird's still pretty good against. And also decently good against sub tears if you're playing an offensive deck that could capitalize on them. Uh, evenly matched, very good. We were looking at Altergeist and possibly Guru being two of the best decks like behind Spiral. So even this is like a really good just going second card in general. Uh, sphere Mode. Uh, there's not a ton of other decks that are putting up huge boards like three monsters guaranteed every time and so this is kind of a risky uh, side in in other matches but if you resolve against spiral at least it's very good and there are matches that it can i just don't think it's as like other decks aren't as aren't reliably putting up three monsters as uh, spirals are so that's one thing there um Artifacts. There are a lot. Of, they're like stun decks or like trap decks that are already just playing this in the main because it's just so strong. Man, it's just a pass one and a twenty two hundred beater built into one, and then you combine what you summon on your second turn with the stuff that you originally summoned, and like you can kind of just push for game immediately, and then summon limit just one of the best floodgates in the game as far as going first. But uh, yeah, that pretty much sums up my list here. There's definitely other stuff that you can sign. Feel free to let me know down below uh, what other side deck options, or main deck options even, that you think would are, are really strong against Spiral specifically, because that's what this format is looking the most like so far. I, I really expect it to round out a little more. I think Spiral will dip a little bit in how good it is, and I think some other decks will rise up and it'll bounce out a little bit. But for right now, it looks like Spiral, Spiral, Spiral. Uh, and so that's why I want to make this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more discussion videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.